I'm working through the current electricity and internal resistance section of the 2019 physics paper. This starts with a multiple choice question, question 1.8. Which one of the following graphs best represents the relationship between potential difference V and current I for an ohmic conductor? An ohmic conductor refers to a conductor that obeys Ohm's law, where we know that Ohm's law tells us that the voltage over a conductor is directly proportional to the current passing through that conductor. And what that tells us is that as the current passing through a conductor increases, the voltage across that conductor will increase in a direct proportional relationship, which tells us that the only correct answer is option B, which shows that as current increases, voltage increases in a directly proportional relationship. The electricity and internal resistance question is always question 8 in this paper, and question 8 reads as follows. In the circuit diagram below, resistor R with a resistor of 5.6 ohms is connected together with a switch, an ammeter and a high resistance voltmeter to a battery with an unknown internal resistance R. The resistance of the connecting wires and the ammeter may be ignored. Note here the high resistance voltmeter is standard. It is just to ensure that no current passes through that voltmeter. The graph below shows the potential difference across the terminals of a battery as a function of time. At a time T1, switch S is closed. So what that tells us is that from 0 until time T1, the switch is open, which means that that voltmeter is at this point reading the open circuit voltage. The open circuit voltage we know is always going to give you exactly the EMF of that battery because there is no energy being lost to the internal resistance within the battery because there is no current flowing. So the open circuit voltage is always the EMF of the battery. And then we know that once the switch is closed at time T1, this becomes the load voltage of the battery, the total amount of voltage that is available to the external circuit once the number of lost volts have been used up, where we know that the EMF of a battery is always equal to the load voltage, the external amount of voltage available, plus the lost volts, the amount of energy or the amount of voltage that is lost to the internal resistance within the battery. Question 8.1, define the term EMF and the definition as per the exam guidelines is the maximum energy provided or work done by a battery per coulomb or per unit of charge passing through it. Question 8.2, write down the value of the EMF of the battery and as we have said, this open circuit voltage gives us the EMF of the battery and that is measured in volts and the EMF is therefore 13 volts. Question 8.3, when switch S is closed, calculate 8.3.1, the current through the resistor. Now, what we have here is we can clearly see that this battery has an internal resistance represented by this dotted line here. So we choose the easiest method which tells us that we can use Ohm's law to say that the resistance of this resistor is equal to the voltage over it divided by the current passing through it. And now since we know what the load voltage is and there is only one resistor in the circuit, that tells us that all of the load voltage provided by the battery is going to be used at that resistor. Obviously, this takes into account the fact that we started with an EMF of 13 volts. We then lost 2.5 of those volts to the internal resistance. And that tells us that the 10.5 volts that remained are used up in this resistor. And we know the resistance of this resistor to be 5.6 as given. Load voltage of 10.5. The current is our unknown here. And therefore the current that is passing through this resistor must be 1.88 amps. The answer is actually 1.875. But the question asks us to round to two decimal places. Or the paper asks us to round to two decimal places. So the answer there at 1.88 amps. Question 8.3.2 asks us to calculate the power dissipated in resistor R. There are a number of options here. We can use the formula P is equal to V times I, 
we can use the formula P is equal to I squared times R. We can use the formula P is equal to V squared over R. All of these are given in the formula sheet. So you choose one that suits you. The voltage being used by that resistor is 10.5 volts, as we shown in the previous question. The current passing through it, we have just worked out as 1.88 amps. And so we can find that the power dissipated is then 19.74 watts. Question 8.3.3 says calculate the internal resistance of the battery. And there were once again a number of ways. The easiest way is using the formula E is equal to I times external resistance plus the internal resistance. Where the EMF we found was 13 volts. The current we already calculated was 1.88. The external resistance in the circuit is 5.6 and the internal resistance is our unknown. And we are allowed then to solve for our internal resistance of 1.31 ohms. We could also have used the formula internal resistance is equal to our number of lost volts divided by the current in the circuit. We would have got the same answer there using that formula. Question 8.4, two identical resistors, each with the resistance X, are now connected in the same circuit with switch S closed as shown below. The ammeter reading now increases to 4 amps. It's important to notice that this question says that it is the same circuit, which means that this battery remains the same, which means that the EMF of this battery remains 13 volts and the internal resistance of this battery remains 1.31 ohms. That is all that remains the same. The battery's EMF and its internal resistance. Obviously, as the current changes, the number of lost volts is going to change and as a result, the load voltage is going to change. So question 8.4.1, how would the voltmeter reading change? Choose from increases, decreases, or remains the same. Give a reason for your answer by referring to V internal resistance. And now they've given us a hint here and we start out by noting that they've told us that the current increases, which tells us that since the current increases, V internal resistance, I'm going to call it VIR, which we know is equal to the current that is passing through the circuit multiplied by the internal resistance of this battery. Since the current increases, V internal resistance is also going to increase. But this voltmeter is not measuring the internal resistance. This voltmeter is measuring the load voltage in the circuit where we know the load voltage is equal to the EMF minus the internal resistance or the lost volts, what I call them. And now since we have just shown that the number of lost volts increases, when the number of lost volts increases, that means the load voltage is going to decrease. And so the correct answer here is that the voltmeter reading decreases. The reason for that is because the number of lost volts increases. Question 8.4.2, calculate resistance X. And so once again, because we know that the EMF of this battery has not changed and the internal resistance has not changed, we can use that to calculate the external resistance in the circuit. EMF given as 13. The current we have been given as 4 amps. The external resistance is our unknown and the internal resistance remains the same because it is the same battery. That allows us to find the external resistance in the circuit as 1.94 ohms. Now since we know that this is an external resistance of 1.94 ohms, we can say that 1 over the parallel resistance, which we know is our external resistance, our parallel, which is going to be equal to 1 over the one set of the parallel circuit, 1 over 5.6, plus 1 over the other set where these two are in series with each other. So we write that as either 1 over R2 to find that parallel set, or we write it as 1 over 2 times x because it is x plus x there. 
And now, because we know what the parallel resistance is calculated over there, we can say 1 over 5.6 plus 1 over 2x is equal to 1 over 9.4, which then allows us to solve to find the value of x, which is 1.49 ohms. The range of acceptable values here, because it might have been rounded differently throughout the calculation, would have been anything from 1.46 to 1.49 ohms. It would also have been acceptable to write here 1 over RP is equal to 1 over 5.6 plus 1 over R2 if we want, and then calculate the resistance R2, which we would have found was 2.97 ohms, and therefore by saying we know that R2 is actually made up of two resistors, therefore we would say that X is equal to 1.49 or 47 or whatever the answer may have been, ohms.